Well, here we are again. Here we go again. It is like that meme, Andy, from Grand Theft Auto. Here we go again. Roma, they draw one to one today in Liguria against Genoa. Before we get into that, obviously, our patrons, thank you for, I, I guess, making it more entertaining from the sense of, wow. Wow, 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 does this team drive people truly mad? If you would like to test your level of madness, patreon.com slash Roma Press. Join the madness. You can get access to early episodes, uh, additional episodes, uh, merchandise items as well. Patreon.com slash Roma Press at IS Roma Press on YouTube. Like, subscribe. Um, I, I, we're doing this again. So what? Round four? About on schedule, considering the usual depravity Roma like to subject us to. Andy, I, I have to tell you, the fact that that equalizer did not come until the 96th, 97th minute. 96. 96. I was, I was surprised because, frankly, Roma were abhorrent that entire second half. It is as if you get two different teams, and this is a theme under De Rossi that worries me this is something we we spoke about even last season and you would at least like to believe some preseason work together having a better understanding of the manager what he's asking for how we approach things we would have at least had that mildly figured out i'm not asking for perfection because the roma perfection will never are, are not things that are synonymous with one another but to see a first half where they were free-flowing they were very good Wasteful beyond all belief. There has to be at least a slight bit of comic relief that Dovbik, although he does get his first goal, Golini nearly saved. I mean, it hit his hand, nearly saved it. Um, and it took about. Uh, That's 19... another guy that I did never want to see again. Golini will will haunt my. I don't want to see, but most importantly, my... with Golini, I don't want to hear him. Yeah. If you have yeah. not seen the video, do yourself the favor. If you're obviously listening to this, how soon after the result obviously de is dependent on you, how much time you need to recover. I would advise a minimum of 48 hours before you were to put on the uh, Peluigi Golini rap, which rap would even be probably more of a compliment. I, it, I don't even know what... The, I just remember the music video, which... I mean, it's it's trap, yeah, it's trap, and, well, and uh, it's the it's the worst kind of of, the... of trap. But that doesn't, you know, it doesn't even come close to how horrible it feels like to have him turn basically into prime Yashin, you know, uh, against <laughs> us. This 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 stadium. I think this is one of those stadiums that will just permanently make me feel ill at ease. Like there are no positives. From this stadium, I can't recall. I mean, aside, except for when uh, Felix Afenagian scored two screamers <laughs> yes. just out of nowhere, I have no positive memories from this stadium. I want nothing to do with the Genova as a city. It leaves me traumatized every single time. As a Roma fan, I really I feel like we haven't made a single positive memory there in God knows how long. And uh, and this time was no exception because you felt it was right there. Like you, like yes. if you had asked me, like, okay, so what's gonna happen? I would have said, yeah, they're gonna score at the 96 minute. It made yes. absolute sense. You know, it was the perfect, perfect logical ending to a game where Roma set themselves up to succeed. Dovbig gets his first goal. Everything's going fine. They're about to clinch their first three points of the season, and then no. Roma are going to Roma, and more people have to uh, be prepared for that. It seems like people uh, have a religious following for this team, and yet they are surprised when these moments occur. This was the most predictable ending to a really disastrous second half. Uh, so, I, you know, for me, it just, I was, I, I could have, it was like a perfect script, you know, it, it just... It was like Kaiser Soze revealing himself to be Kevin Spacey in The Usual Suspects. It's like, yeah, makes sense. Uh-huh, I see it now. Like, yeah, sure. Uh, why not? I was the idiot who two and a half minutes prior to full time, I began to do my post-match reaction for the patrons. A and I, 
when I saw the goal, I said, you idiot. You done. Yeah. You, you set you yourself up. Yeah. What are you doing? Jesus. What You've been are doing you do- this too much of the you- time. What are you doing, John? <laughs> you idiot. I, you know, and listen, all of us can fall for it. Man, I don't know whether to be more bothered by the missed chances, by the fact that this team, how you don't have the character to stay firm. Man, that those the, the entire full time. I would say even I would say from the 80th minute on, it was chaos. There was there was no structure to the team. When they got the ball, you could see the urine running down their pants. They could not hold on to it for what seemed like more than two passes. I can't recall an action where they strung five to seven together in the last 20 minutes, including injury time. And then in added time, it was, I mean, it was a barrage. And I'm mad at that. But I'm also kind of mad at the fact that I looked at the XGA, and I I will put down the screen now for those of you who are watching just to add a bit more uh, anger and a bit more fury to how you're feeling right now. The XG was somehow under three. I thought it would be five to seven or something. It seemed like they had well, the, so many. And, and, so many. and listen, up until, up until the 60th minute, I would say you, you played really, really well. I yes. think uh, 55th, 60th minute, you played really well. You had two huge chances. Um, that you could have converted. Uh, yes. And I think after uh, after the 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 foul uh, f- wasn't blown on Dybala uh, yes. on the you know on the uh, you know when that wasn't blown when when that wasn't given in your favor, that's when you let yourself be overwhelmed by the opponent. And for some reason, you started to allow way too many crosses. You started to just be completely inept in going forward. You lost yes. possession time and time again. You became, all of a sudden, you became the victim. Uh, and there was absolutely no reason for that except for that instance. I would argue that today's refereeing this play is just perfectly on brand with Serie A. It's just awful, um, really awful. But it's not why we lost. It's just something that has to be commented on. The referee was terrible. Um Yes, but, but he's not the reason me, why they lost, man. I see patrons saying that. Not, I, no. can't go I can't go no, there. I can't go there. He's no, horrible. No, there, no, what are you talking about? There is true. no patrons saying No, there are no patrons saying that. I think patrons right now are mostly No, there were, the there were two who saying the um, ref ruined the, the match, which is, which is okay. true, but I, I can't blame the referee. I, the, I ref, the, ref was, the, ref, the ref was awful. It's, it's to be expected, I think, at this point uh, in Serie A. What, what Roma yeah, I mean, did, the VAR, they, man. They, Can, before the, we get into the, the thing, Roma the VAR, work- I, I, I mean, even by Italian standards, where you just, if you haven't visited the country, you have to assume everything you are scheduled for will be 15 to 30 minutes late, and that's if you're lucky, okay? How long was that VAR? T- 10 minutes? I, I, I was floored how it took that long <laughs> to do a single review. You were able to hear Did all see he was cursed. I don't, I don't know if any, but it, depending on which uh, channel you picked it up on, but they're all see swearing quite a bit with Mancini, uh, complaining about how long it was taking. That was absurd. I couldn't agree with you more as far as the individual, individual decisions, but th- that one at Dybala was so uh, egregious. Egregious, egregious, uh. egregious for sure. <laughs> and it's and it's you know unfortunately we have to understand that this this is the limits that Roma are in right now in, in the sense that there's still that team that if an episode of that magnitude doesn't go their way yeah. they slump their shoulders and and that in, indirectly affects everything else that happens it, it, it completely sort of took the wind out of their sails they had it going for them uh, we were playing well. Dovbe gets his goal. The team creates chances. We're right there. We're right there. We can secure this match. We can secure these three points. And an episode doesn't go our way. It's the oldest story in the book. And Roma, all of a sudden, they just disappear. And and so I think uh, we're talking about a team that, as we all should know, is not there yet in terms of growth, in terms of gelling with each other, 
because this is, you know, a team that is cohesive, a team that is on the same page, doesn't go 30 minutes completely, you know, completely surrendering yes. themselves to Genoa. A, a team that is cohesive, a team that knows what to do with, with themselves, they don't allow 30 minutes of Genoa absolutely crushing them in their own half. It, do, it just doesn't happen. Even if you play badly, if you're a cohesive team, you have some way of getting out of pressure. Roma were completely helpless with the way Genoa were pu pushing them into their own half. So we are looking at a team that clearly is, yes, I'm, I'm afraid we will have to use that word in, uh, 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 in a specific moment of a process of a project. Oh, I thought you were going to say the, the other PRO word. No, the no the process the process, um, unfortunately, entails moments where the team has to realize that they're still not good enough. In the sense that they, you know, you yes, you may have added twelve players this summer, but that means that you have to learn. To play with those 12 players you have to find ways to to rely on on people you have to find ways to first of all also field a, a, a certain cohesive starting lineup that makes sense game in game out wow. and uh, and then find the right answers off the bench because then you find yourself in these instances this is not going to be the first and only time where roma you know suffer pressure from a lesser opponent but going forward, we have to find ways to get out of it. Today, it was like Roma had no answers in those final 30 minutes. It's something you cannot allow yourself, especially when you're leading. When you're le you know, if I understood, if, if, if it was 0-0, pressure gets to you. You're looking for that first win of the season. But if yes. you're one, up 1-0, one, one you have to take advantage of it instead of instead of giving up the ball to to Genoa. So Genoa are always a pain in the ass, but Roma today, unfortunately, they 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 completely crumbled mentally. I think more than anything else in those final thirty minutes. The mentality is worrying. I I absolutely am on board with you. Particularly even prior to the meltdown beginning in the. 80th minute or so, they were so cavalier with the ball. They were very, very sloppy in the final third. I don't know, again, the wasted chances. I, I mean, Dovbik got the goal. I suppose we might as well just get to it now. So Dovbik got the goal, but it, it, he wasted a lot. I mean, he had that cross, that Golin. Was that a great save or was that a bad shot? Maybe it can be both. Yeah, where in the first half he gets that. I think it, I think it's both. In in these okay. matches, it doesn't really count because these matches are always going to be half and half. You know, you know. Tell me, John, uh, uh, the last game at the Ferraris where we really showed up. Um, I can't even go. Remember that game where <laughs> we were playing against uh, against Samp with. Uh, and Antonucci comes in and he equalizes. And that team had yes. Dzeko and everybody. Had Dzeko, the whole squad. Yeah. <laughs> well, now so, you have to name which, which country that guy plays in, Antonucci. Because Antonucci, I know he got banished I, I, from Last Portugal, time was yeah. Portugal, no? Yeah, yeah. Portugal. Mm -hmm. Oh, so he's that's with Chazena uh, now. Chazena. Okay, see, there you Good. go. That's a step in the right direction. But I, I think... What I, what I just mean is, you know, obviously Dovbik far from perfect match, but I I don't think you can expect in this specific context quality on the ball. Like I never would go into this game thinking that it's going to be a walk in the park, much less that we're going to be watching some astonishing champagne football. It just doesn't happen this way. Um, not against this Genoa side, because as I said before, Gilardino, we, I think we've won only one game against Gilardino. Uh, one, yes. So yes, yeah. So that's all you need to know. This is not an easy team to face. But what Roma should have done today is realize that exactly they were in a really good situation, in a really good situation, and you let it slip out of your hands. Why exactly? Yes, I, I. The thing is, when it when it comes to results like this, I it, it is rarely going to be one thing. There is going to be a confluence of events, of circumstances that come into play, and you fumble the bag, so to speak. Are you worried about Dovbik though? Because this is a slow start. 
again, maybe I, I'm too far influenced by our patron group chat. Um, they do make. But he scored a goal, gone. John. What, what are you talking no, about? No, he no, scored no. A goal. Uh, hold Why on, am I worried? Hold on. No, I, I, no, no, absolutely. No. Hold on. I, I am. I'm not Let's even not saying necessarily doing... about the, the 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 mischances today. No, no, no. Hold on. I, I am saying strictly. Maybe yeah. it was because mm. Paulo Dybala had a very poor performance today. I mean, that guy mm. NASA is still tracking some of the, the the shots that that poor guy had on target. He he did one with his right foot that I, I it, it had to have been a troll or maybe there was uh, somebody was doing some side bet, uh, some prop bet that was will Paulo Dybala kick the ball with his right foot and send it into orbit. Maybe that was the case. He really struggled today. He really struggled. The <laughs> every single corner kick or free kick seemed like Roma just uh, wiped their backside with it. They didn't do anything. Um, if I ever see a short corner again, I, I will have trouble remaining here on this uh, in this existence because they, they do nothing with it. But this thing with Dov, Bick, with Dybala, I, clearly they are still learning each other's mechanisms, which is fine. Yeah, it's this, is the, some time. this is the first Despite time. Despite what everybody is saying in the Patreon group chats, man, this is still early. This is still early. Usually I'd be panicked by now, but I, I'm So what I'm are not. we talking about? Why, 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 so why are, why are we asking, uh, am I worried about Dolby? This isn't ESPN where, because, where Stephen A. Smith no, 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 goes, but, goes about... Uh, <laughs> But your attack, he is the focal point of the attack, okay? And sure. clearly okay. it is taking some experiment experimentation to find the right yes. balance, the right setup for him. But to me, when we have something where De Rossi goes from, okay, Sule, Dybala, uh, Dovbeck, okay, this is going to be the trio of your attack. Or how we go from El Shirawi, being able to you know sniff some things on the bench to playing the you know the majority well, but, of the but, match. But El Sharawi was El was injured most of preseason. De Rossi said he, he El, was. El was was, was yes. injured in the match against Switzerland at the end of the Euros that in, inevitably Correct. influenced his his availability in the next matches. On top of that, too, obviously the Zalewski thing. I'm not going to touch that for the next few days. I need, I need respite because a Zoolander, mm -hmm. believe it or not, watched our yeah. episode and sent me a message um, that I will not publish <laughs> out of courtesy. Oh, no. You oh, no. Yes. Oh, no. So anyways, <laughs> it is clear that De Rossi and even Roma themselves, they are still trying to figure this thing out. It's the first few dates with the per you know, with, with your partner. It's awkward. It's weird. You don't know what kind of jokes you are open to say, how you know what the sense of humor of the other person is. You are treading lightly. However, Andy, I I, I do have issues where we go with Sule started to, to, to no Sule. Like, what yeah, are we doing sure. here? It's, Which direction have, are we yeah, going? Yeah, you have to. I understand. You have to. You have to find consistency. You have to figure it out. But. This is when you have to figure it out. Unfortunately, in preseason, it was only possible to a certain extent. Listen, Lefe was a stable part of preseason. He got hurt. You have to find ways, right? But Paredes is not fit enough. So you can't just replace uh, Lefe with Paredes. You have to replace also Paredes with someone else. Hence, you get Manu Kone, who showed good things, who came at, and on the transfer deadline. You have Pizzilli, who comes out of nowhere, puts on a really good performance against Juve. You want to have those guys playing together. You have to understand in what situation uh, Pellegrini is in. You have to also balance things out with the thought that, hey, maybe Baldanzi can play Mezzal after all. So this mm. is definitely nothing to do with Dovbig. This is definitely more of a, of a team situation. And... I, I know we've said it, you know, the, the points that you drop here at this time, blah, 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 blah. But at the end of the day, I can't stress this enough. If you want to see something new, you have to sign up for these bad moments. And for that's how it happens. Last season, I remember people praying that De Rossi renews and saying he just needs time. <laughs> give him time. Give him a full season. John, I saw... 20 minutes ago, as soon as the game ended, I saw people in the Patreon him, group yeah? chat saying, when is he leaving? What are the Friedkins <laughs> going to do? 
<laughs> Take the team into a retiro. What? what? Oh my God! You have to wait. Somebody said, "Hold on." Somebody <laughs> said the retiro. Somebody said retiro. Somebody <laughs> said, "Put those boys into the training center, lock them up, and let them figure oh. things out." You I'm want them sorry, to play but worse. it just do that. Do 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 that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If you want, if you stay, want more drama, goal, yeah. if you. It, if you want more drama, if you want a shittier team, then sure. Oh but my gosh. the thing about right now is we have to accept that these results suck. Unfortunately, sorry, I'm not here to say this feels good. I'm not here to say the team played great. The team played a, a horrible final 30, 35 minutes. Horrible. They were nowhere to be found. They welcomed that goal. Basically, they welcomed Genoa into their own goal. Okay. But... Unfortunately, you have you, you have to see these experiments with the lineup, especially for what they are. They are experiments. They are De Rossi trying to get a read on these guys. Um, don't trust me. Look at Thiago Motta and Juventus. Everybody hailed them as the new Barca of 2018-2010 because of the first two results that they got in the first two games. But look at what Thiago Motta is doing right now. He's also trying things out. Yes. He went like four completely different lineups and some work, some don't work. That's what De Rossi is doing. You have to accept that. You have to accept that what you asked for in the summer is to, in a way, start from scratch, okay? You may not like it, but this is what we do, okay? This is what we do. Today, we start with a 3-5-2, but we have sales makers on the wing. We have Angelini on the other wing. We got... Um, we got uh, we got Manu Kone, we got Pizzilli in two pivotal positions that uh, you know that uh, before were up for Pellegrini and Paredes. We have Dovbik leading the attack. Those are major changes. These are all interpreters that will make a difference. But you just have to find a way to have them play. You have to also find a way for this team to recognize these moments. And as I said before to understand how they can figure out these situations, how they can react to Genoa putting pressure on them, okay? Because, sure, if you have guys that play with each other game in, game out, they'll figure it out, they'll have the answer. But this team today, it was pretty clear that they hadn't been prepared uh, on what to do if Genoa were to put the pressure on them and they have a one-goal lead, right? So... Clearly, this team was like, okay, what now? Uh, what's plan C? What's plan D? We don't have it. Why? We have to figure it out. Those are things, unfortunately, that come to light only through these painful, painful results. Because today is painful. I'm not here to, to say it's, it's, it feels good. It doesn't. But how do you want this team to make the progress that you thought they were going to make in the summer just based off of some prediction. Oh, I want De Rossi. De Rossi now is going to do wonders. Well, you have to, you know, football is 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 about working. It's about working, it's about work with the coach, with the players. It's about finding solutions together. The solutions, unfortunately, are usually products of problems that you must resolve. Today was a problem. Today you were confronted with a scenario where you take one goal advantage and you're unable to hold on to it in a difficult stadium. Yeah, De Rossi right now on the zone, more or less saying things we have already said on here. Dominated the first half. And then in the second half, we dropped too deep. We lost the ball too much. Not... Nothing really surprising coming from his end as far as his evaluation of uh, the performance of Roma. I have to say that the things that still are extremely concerning to me. Now, yes, they they did overhaul the team. They did bring in many new guys. They brought in uh, primarily guys in the prime, uh, younger guys. But when you have, you still have the likes of Gianluca Macini, Indica, you had Hermoso out there at the end. One to zero, okay, you wasted chances. The second half has been crap. It's been crap, okay? Um, instead of showing the necessary maturity or the necessary character, which 
I still don't understand. Now, if it's a team like Empoli, if it's a team lacking those senators, those champions, I, I, I completely understand. Even, even if you're a team that is crap, it, it, it's hard to show mentality when you know you're crap. But fine. Um, Andy, I, I think this Genoa team is absolute shit, if I'm being honest. I, I, their attack, like luster midfield, is a bunch of aging pieces. Sure. I mean, Badel. Yeah, but, but, but they're, they're a good team. Uh, Malinov. Yeah, they're, they're, and they're tough. They're, they're tough. They and are. The they are. are these are guys. And, and they, Listen, that these crowd are the, today well, was impressive as hell. That crowd yes, was impressive as hell yes, today. Yes. Credit to where credit is due. Yes. Listen, guys like that, Badel, never overly impressive. They are the guys at the gym play, when you're playing a little bit of basketball. It's the 55-year-old guy, the 60-year-old. Just, you know. Does not look like anything even remotely yeah. resembling somebody who <laughs> may hoop a bit, so to speak. But then he, you know, they're like he, the truck him... drivers. They're like the truck <laughs> drivers who go to the gym, you know. And you're like, oh my god, they're sloppy. They're look at it, they're all greasy, and then they just start pulling those weights. Yeah. So listen, he, he, those are very solid pieces to a team where if you want to survive and you think you're going to be facing relegation, they can bring something a little bit more. But I have to tell you, to see them melt down in that manner like that, again, I, I would be able to excuse this if you had the 11 Sules on the pitch. I would be able to excuse this if you had uh, Pisilis on the pitch all over the place. But, but you were rife with players who have been at... Roma and have been at very yeah, high levels. You were rife time. with play with players who lost in that stadium four to one last season. Do you remember? I mean, that, what are we talking about here? Where was the mentality then? You know, that was easily remember that that game was one of the worst games we've ever seen. I, but I, I would say the mistakes in that game was everybody uh, in that match. You saw everybody nothing shut in that down. match from beginning to end yeah, in that match. That, there was not the first sure. half like there was today. So, no. No, I understand from the sense nothing. of, yes, uh, you, you don't have the confidence of playing in that stadium. That is fine. V very few do it, by the way. I mean, listen, I I, I, I make fun of every place throughout the country, but uh, I, I have been on the record. Liguria is among my favorite places. Uh, that stadium is fantastic, <laughs> even though it is decrepit. It is old. Um, the neighborhood <laughs> that it is in, that's why they call it the Marassi. There it's we very, are. Very, very quaint place. The, the show. Very quaint yeah. place. I, I really enjoy it. <laughs> However, man, you know, I can excuse, you know, like last season. Okay, you were shit. Uh, from from beginning to end. Do you, rem do you remember that match last season? From zero to 90, you played. That, that match even... almost cost Mourinho his place. His Thiago yes. Pinto saved Mourinho. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thiago Pinto, Pinto saved Mourinho's job at that very instance. <laughs> but I get infuriated when I see a first half where you show everything. I can even put the wasted chances aside. You showed fluidity in attack. You were very, very positionally aware and mature in defense and in midfield. There was really nothing that stood out to me in the first half beyond the mischances that were a problem. So why do we have such a collapse? What, because it's not, it has nothing to do with what the manager is asking of you, okay? It's not as if Terossi said, hey, no, guys, no. you know what? We played great that first half. You no, know no, what I want from back, us? I back. want you to play yeah. shit in the second half just to, just yeah, yeah, to mix yeah, yeah. things up. Okay, fine. So... Why do I see guys not being able to string three passes together? It, it, why am I seeing guys like uh, Kone did this? Uh, I don't know which minute it was, but man, he takes the ball all the way to the end. Roma, they have a perfect counter attack, and he just it, it, it's uh, three on uh, three on two to Roma. Uh, he just dribbles the ball and loses. I mean, a, a, a wasted chance. You get nothing sure. out of it. So yeah, why I. We are talking about fundamentals here, not turning the ball over to the opponent, not giving it away yeah. in your area. So why is that? Man, Indica, Indica uh, losing the ball, giving, uh, uh, nearly killed me. So uh, yeah. why is it these mistakes? Mistakes are always going to be expected for, uh, from mistakes Roma, are but... Mistakes are a result of anything. I mean, mistakes happen as a result of, of, of even the tiniest of things. But usually with Roma, it's about pressure. It's about players succumbing to pressure and and we've seen this team have highs and lows especially in that i would say that roma are more more than anything more than being victims of i don't know a a, a better opponent usually when roma have a disaster class of the of the sort that we witnessed in those final 30 minutes is because they can't handle pressure <sighs> 
But see, I, I, I hear that's... that. But man, this okay, is also John, the team I... that went to San Siro last, last April and dominated. No, Milan. this is not it. It's not it. It's not this. It's not this team. It's not this team. You, Regardless of what you think, regardless if you say, ah, oh, well, you only had two new players on the pitch. It still doesn't matter. It's, it's not. It's not. We, we are moving. We're moving. The team is changing. The team is changing. Philosophies are changing. You, you set up your team differently. I mean, it, 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 it's different. Every small change. I know it's hard to believe, but you can't put those. Just like we didn't look at De Rossi's Roma, the same way we looked at Jose Mourinho's Roma. Remember, we made it a point to say that is not the Roma team that we saw in the first half of the season. All the judgment we make must be made with that concept in mind that we are talking about a different team. For me, whenever you start a new season, you are a new team. Just like I say, when we refer to Mourinho's era, we refer to year one, year two, year three. We don't say, we don't throw in the whole bulk. No. Because no. those were three completely different situations. That's what we have today. I know it's hard to accept that. I know because uh, you don't have the answers. Nobody has. So when you ask me why, why do Roma do this? I don't know. I don't know. I would love to know. I would love to get into those players' heads. I would love to understand what goes on when Paulo Dybala falls over, the, the foul is not called, and Genoa just completely take over. I would love yes. to know what happens then. I would love to know what is said behind the scenes. I can tell you that. What I can assume is that this is a team... That is, yes, as you say it, learning the fundamentals that they're lacking. Look at Milan with Fonseca. They're learning yes. the fundamentals of defending. They can't defend for shit. The only time they were able to hold on to a is against sheet old friend is Eusebio. They, yeah, always call is a when they faced from that guy. Eusebio Di Francesco and <laughs> killed him with four goals in 29 minutes, two goals of which were basically a sabotage by the goalkeeper. <laughs> yeah. I, so I what need are some we, you know, so, after this shit. I, man. <laughs> I, I know, John, but I'm not here. You know, I just want, I, 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 listen, it's helpless. I know people will form their judgments. People, well, I, if De Rossi is going to be covered with so much excrement in the next few days from the media and the fans, because a lot of fans are also waiting just for that. There's a lot of fans who feel that De Rossi doesn't deserve to be where he is, and he's going to get a lot of shit. And I'm sure he's ready for it, especially now that he got a red card. So you can, you can even, that's even more inviting for, for the well, haters. He, but Well, he got the trio but, too. But the I thing, mean, Francesco Totti dumping on him just before this. You know, uh, yeah, and and if, you, if you listen to before this match, in his pre-match, in his pre-match with that, that's only yeah. he just said, uh, yeah, well, uh, you know, he always, whenever he says something, it creates a lot of noise. Well, that doesn't sound like a great endorsement from from De Rossi. What I mean to say is, you, I, I know it's helpless to to make people understand that. Unfortunately, there are these painful moments that aren't explicable to us. But at some point, they must happen. Like, they have to go, you, you know, you have to go through it. If, if at the cost of coming out on the other end and playing well and getting the team to work together, if that is what it takes, then I'm willing to sign up for it in the sense that if, I, if in a month from now, this team has it figured out and they can really go into, you know, fourth gear, fifth gear and just run, then great. Then I, I, I'll think about this game and think, oh, you know what? This was needed. Just like I remember with fondness, with actual fondness, the match where we lost against Juve in Mourinho's first year. Yes. And suddenly that match made us click. And we're like, holy, we can't allow ourselves to do that. That game started our Conference League title, you know, the run. So that's when we took it seriously. That's when we understood what it takes to be a team. If and remember games, that match if, uh, was just uh, as torturous as this one. I mean, sort of. No, uh, even more, even more, you, even more. You lose, you lose in, in the stadium where you were. Oh my god! But the payoff was great, and I want to believe that if if today the, the last second equalizer comes in and it rips your heart out, sure. But if you can promise me, or if I can hope in a team that learns to read those moments and react to those moments adequately and avoid suffering such 
uh, chances at the death in the future, then you have to sign me up. I know I'm in the minority when I say that I'm willing to accept that. Perhaps there are people who say, well, that's loser mentality. I do think that these things, unfortunately, they're unavoidable during a certain part of a process. I mean, obviously, if they stretch out for too long, then it becomes unsustainable. But I do think that uh, sometimes you need these moments, as painful as they are. They are painful. The thing I would, I suppose, like to hmm, remind, or not remind, I guess put out there to some of the patrons calling for the head of De Rossi. For me, there are a few circumstances where you have to sack the manager without question. When it becomes very clear the players no longer respond to his word, when you have a manager absolutely um, uh, getting wrong every single tactical, technical situation, or when it becomes clear that the manager just, you know, is not getting the desired results. We can't exactly put a reason on it, but we have a long-term thing here. And then we have a long-term, uh, we have a large uh, data pool that we can look at and say, okay, things are not going good. We need to make a change. I, I'm on this, I, the standpoint I come from when it comes to this managerial thing, because the things we saw today, and I gave the exact same endorsement to Jose Mourinho at various times. Uh, I can't recall if I ever did for dear friend Eusebio or Paulo Fonseca, but perhaps I did, and I just can't recall. Andy, changing the manager does not is not the, the players are not going to magically know how to string four passes together with a new manager. Uh, the players are not going to learn how to not urinate their pants, okay, in the final moments of the match. A new manager is not going to come in and all of a sudden they are courageous in the final moments or mature in these uh, very difficult circumstances during a game. That doesn't do anything. A, a new manager is not going to change that. I, I am, I've said this many times before, and I do get shit for it, but many others have echoed it. This is the most difficult place to succeed in football behind only Real Madrid, in my opinion. And, and I think very few discount that factor. And what that has to do with today, you might be willing to put that aside, but this is a, a group of supporters. This is an environment that is always piled under pressure. I mean, for goodness sakes, you have the club's best player coming out just a few days before the match and giving one of the most odd interviews I've ever heard where he's almost saying like he loves the club, but he's also obviously by doing this odd interview, trying to take a, a, a dump on the current uh, group of ownership and putting unnecessary pressure on the team and his uh, friend, Daniele De Rossi, for no reason uh, beyond wanting to see his own words in print. So for the people that want to go off with the head of De Rossi, I realistically don't comprehend that mindset because I don't know the things that lost you or, or, or forced you to drop points today. I do not know what a change in manager fixes that stuff. It does not. It does not it, because you you start from scratch. Like you 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 start from scratch. I I think I thought people wanted to to have something good going. And instead, I realized that, you know, it's the same kind of mentality that people love when it comes to the transfer market. You know, as soon as a player doesn't work out, sell him. What? Yes. What are you saying? He's got, he's, he put in four performances. What, what are we talking about? You know, it's that same merge of, no, scrap it. I don't want it. You know, no, that doesn't work. At some point, you will have to trust the process. You know, you stuck well, with Mourinho for two and a half years, despite having really horrible spells, but you stuck with him, sure, you can, you, 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 then you can say, wow, I, I always said it, that his football sucked. Yes, but if you didn't stick with him in that first season, you don't win the Conference League title, okay? If you drop Mourinho after that Juve match, which would have made sense because, hey, you, everybody would, was horrified. Everybody was horrified. You let Juve score four goals on you, including Mattia De Ciglio scoring the <laughs> winner. What are you talking about? Uh, but 
but it, it's it's the way it happens you know like the 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 decision to go through with it paid off yes. you can't keep avoiding these moments because these moments will always show up you replace the rossi you'll still crumble like this with another manager guaranteed it always happens it's unavoidable every team goes yes. through it so every the team, important yes. thing is the important thing is to get over it that's that's what's important so you can't be shocked when a team suffers loss there is not a single team that is perfect okay every team suffers these losses you have to accept that you have to take the pain you can be unhappy with the way that this team is playing but we're exactly what we're trying to do is to have these these guys playing together because right now they're not doing it right now you clearly see exactly a game of two halves why because these guys still are learning to play with each other yes and beyond that as well i i, I think the thing that will actually harbor results in the future in terms of this you know urinating your your pants in the final moments of the game having drossi actually follow through on this thing because every manager when he comes in he says no no there is not a single person whose place is not secure everybody is up for this uh, every player is up for discussion in my starting 11 well uh everybody says it few follow through on it you know like good parenting i can threaten a, a punishment all i want for my children if they do something wrong but if i don't follow through on it come on i'm a pushover um and he did see is actually doing it Pisili, yeah yeah you're going to lose your place to him Lorenzo Pellegrini, Brian Cristante, you are not infallible either. Paredes, get it together or you're sitting. Sule, yes, we may have paid a lot for you this summer, but uh, today you're on the bench and get comfortable. Yeah, because Alexis Salzmakers is showing me better things in training. Yeah, it's, yes. it's that. It's, it's, it's every, and it has to be, and it, that's why I say, look at what Thiago Motta is doing with Juventus. A manager who who everybody seems to love, a manager who everybody is so impressed by. Okay, fine. Then look at what he's doing with Juventus. Look at their recent results. Look at the match against Empoli. Look at look at that match. Tell me they're playing well. They're not right, because they're still million learning. 200 million euros worth of transfer sitting on the bench. That takes yeah, balls, they, I have to they, say. The balls it takes to have, do that, man. Dusan Vlahovic, 12 million euros a year misses chance after chance after chance but you stick with him okay you stick with him because you know that he'll get over it just like Thiago Mota is trying things out with a Juventus team that has members of the old squad just like Roma members of this new transfer window and young players just like Roma trying to put these pieces together is a challenge for just about anybody okay so we have to take these 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 games that almost feel like defeats we have to take them we have to take them because unfortunately it is part of that word that everybody hates but seems to at the same time everybody seems to call for a process everybody seems to be i want i want a new project i i want to start something you know oh look at look at look at atalanta they're doing so well you know oh look at them how successful they are Atalanta came up through Serie B, okay? <laughs> Atalanta were not a serious club until Giampiero Gasperini came up in 2016, showed up. And brought a friend and with him. And who... Gone through yes. ups and downs, suffered humiliating defeats, but then came up on top, okay? Because they stuck with it. I'm not saying, but... I'm not saying that this is what we're going to do, but I see a lot of people call for that. And then when it finally arrives, when Roma finally go out of their way and say, we're starting something new and we're doing it with this manager, with this sporting director, with these players, all of a sudden, everybody's like, oh, well, but, but, but why are you not winning? Why are you not doing this? Why are you not doing that? I didn't sign up for it. Excuse me, what? At the end of last season, everybody was calling for De Rossi to have time, to have the space, to have his own transfer market, to pick his own players, to, to have the time to develop his own strategies, to not just use Mourinho's old tactics, to use this team the way he wants it, to shape it to his vision. Do you think that's how it works, that you play one match and the, the coach has it all figured out? I'm sorry, that's not how it works. 
Let's end it there, and I will advise people, since you use the word process several times, even if you don't follow the NBA, there is a great book, and I forget who it, it, it was written by, but it's called Tanking to the Top, and it is an overview of the Philadelphia 76ers team who prior to what, 2017, 2016? 16, I would say 16 it started, yeah. Okay, I mean, the the prior half decade or so before that, five to seven years, they, they just lost and they tanked and they were shit and they were terrible, setting records for how poor they were. Again, even if you don't watch NBA, it's a very good book outlining what the mentality is and having a long-term vision and actually following through with it and not listening uh, not listening to the voices and the discontent of the supporters, um, getting angry with you and staying on course and understanding that there is a long term vision. Now, I am not saying half decade. I am not saying that at all. I am merely, merely yes. trying yes. to show what sort of mindset you have to have when it comes to this stuff. You can't allow a single result. You can't allow even a single period. Stretch even four, even four games, you. John. Even even yes, four games. Yes. Even four games. Even yes. four games. Because I know for a fact that if you go then on for um, the next month, month and a half, playing good football, these four games will be a distant memories. It, right now, it's not a, as much about the points as it is about the team's performances. That's that's what we have to remember. That. Really, and that's exactly what Tiago Mota with Juventus yesterday. He he draws. We're with going to get Empoli. decimated in the comments saying you fucking zero losers. zero. No, I could give a shit, man. I could give a shit. I could give a shit. If you want, you can set up your own podcast and you can talk your shit there. What I'm gonna say is, listen to Tiago Mota. Listen to Tiago Mota talk after that Empoli draw, an embarrassing result after a really bad match. Tiago Mota is optimistic. Tiago Mota is positive. Do you know why? Because he knows that at some point he will have these guys playing football. He just needs to put the, the ingredients together, figure out the recipe. That's all I'm saying. You have to have faith. At some point, you have to have faith. Because otherwise, if it's just gloom and misery, then don't watch it. Or at least just shut yourself in a lonely room and stay there. Because this is not... It, it's just going to stay this way, okay? Otherwise, you have to understand that there are things that come slowly. And even good results, sometimes they come even more, even they come at a higher price than the performances. Roma right now are working on one thing. That's the performances. Next, it's going to be the points. Very true. Don't lose faith. The one thing I wanted to say to add to that was something insightful, like, yes, have patience. These things take time. And then I wanted to add, and I couldn't tell if it was funny or not. Well, it takes nine months to make a baby, and De Rossi hasn't even been here for nine months. If you were to look at the calendar, yeah. it has only been eight, in fact. Eight as of today, 15 September. So yeah. it sucks. This has happened before. I, I don't know why we allow ourselves to get so we buy in completely and for some reason we get under this yes. delusion that one good transfer and market for, one good summer of uh new players and for some reason <laughs> and that's exactly john that's exactly why you, what you said is true this is the most difficult city to win in why because in other places that talk that 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 fear that insecurity that fans have doesn't result too much in other cities, it's not as palpable. This city, as soon as that pressure gets out there, it starts to strangle the club. Each and every time, I can't tell you how many times I've seen managers, players fail because people were not patient. Because this, if there is a place in this world where the city can either put you to the top with its love, with its unbelievable love, or completely destroy you. That's a whole different matter, but it can be. That's this is the place, and that's the same with a with its direct opposite, Real Madrid, a club notorious for winning. But that's where the pressure is also there, and that's where the pressure also influences the club to the same degree as it influences Roma. 
but they have plenty of reason to have that pressure because they have the results to back it up. Yes. We are just so desperate to have it here. We are so desperate to have it here. We're like the Philly fans. We're like the Philly fans. We're like the Philly fans. We're like, when are we going to get back to glory? What glory? When was the glory? What what are you talking about? (laughs) Correct. It sucks. Listen. I don't advise this, but if you ever fly into Torino, if you if there is a if there is a bad result for you, and you do not hear when you are in the taxi, okay, going to your hotel, there are not nine different radios with the biggest goofs in the world, complaining, yelling, uh, contradicting themselves from a day prior. You just don't have it here. The first uh, nine uh, uh, dials dial turns on the radio it's all Roma it's all Roma that's it so it's very difficult to turn it down it is very difficult to not get angry or pissed off because yes I mean this sucks we've been through it before but man if we are talking about waving the white flag now getting rid of the Rossi in match day four I can't I can't do if you're going to tell me that now you're going to tell me that we're going, yeah, we're going to do the I'm, death I'm, I'm, I'm in quitting. October I'm quitting. October we're to... doing the death no, yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm quitting. I'm quitting. This, I listen, think the, the show would quit. Yeah. The show would stop. The yeah. show would stay, stop, undoubtedly. Stay the course. Stay the course. It sucks. We don't have to like it, but stay the course. Stay the course. Until next time. Ciao.